Welcome to Nigeria's Finest Breakfast Show Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodi. Welcome to today's uh, broadcast, the 10th day of March 2021. Women of the world want and deserve equal uh, future free from stigma, uh, stigma, stereotypes and violence. A future that's sustainable, peaceful, with equal rights and opportunities for all. Uh, to get us there, the world needs women at every table where decisions are being made. All right, uh, in the spirit of celebrating the 2021 International Women's Day, uh, we've chosen today to look at uh, the issue, talking about uh, Nigerian women the, in leadership, the challenges uh, and their struggles, and also what the future uh, holds for them. Uh, that uh, is going to be around our focus on today's edition of the program Dialogue. And uh, the best person who we've chosen and our preferred choice to lead this uh, advocacy and campaign on today's discourse is no other person but uh, the famous Enne Obi, who is the country director of Action Aid uh, Nigeria. Uh, she's currently on, on the phone. Uh, we'll be speaking with her live right now. Good morning, man. Nice to have you join us on Dialogue. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, let's look at... Uh, while we celebrate uh, the International Women's Day, I uh, would like you to give us a, a very ground perspective to uh, the challenges women ha are facing and uh, what the future holds for women, especially Nigerian women who ha are doing great things, not just in the African continent, but globally. Uh, for instance, uh, Ngozi Okonjo-Wela, for instance, being the first black woman to become the Director General of the World Trade Organization. So take us to... Uh, the essence of the 2021 International Women's Day. Thank you so much for the opportunity. The theme of this year's uh, celebration is women in leadership, achieving an equal future in the COVID-19 world. Uh, this year takes us to looking at achieving the in leadership, you know, uh, getting to the leadership level. I think it is good to, to, to look back and say, what is the leadership, women in leadership in Nigeria? How are we looking at things? Are they in the leadership positions in Nigeria? Women account for more than 50% of the population of Nigeria. And that is enough to look at the issues of Beijing. There have been several attempts in the past. Beijing platform, uh, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, there have been a series of attempts on affirmative action, but the Nigerian government has done very little in terms of women participation in politics, women participation in decision making. And so when we are focusing on women in leadership, we need to look at the laws and policies that are in within the country and how our leaders have adhered to it. I think there has been a lot of lip services in terms of the way women, when it is time for election, they mobilize women to vote for them. But once, I think the patriarchal nature of uh, Nigeria and Africa looks at, you know, really subjugates women. And when we say there are so many educated people in Nigeria now, both men and women. And so when the men are in power, the politicians are in power, and they are not looking at the equity issue, of saying, you know, looking at uh, appointing, if, if you are saying, okay, uh, for ministers and all of that, the state send names, and so they send the name of the male, female, we need to look at the issue of quota. The Federal Character Commission, you know, indicates that you want to make sure there is equity to, to measure the leadership so that one, there is no monotony or there is no one ethnic group you know, that is occupying position. Why can't we apply that for women? I think it's a roll call as we are focusing on women in leadership. If you can, like you rightly say, that Okonja Iwala, when she was a minister, she distinguished herself. True. All of the women who have been given very tough positions, and, you know, if you reflect, you will need to name one that did not perform outstandingly. And so, okay. when we are, as we are reflecting, on this year's thing, we need to look at the government's attempt to putting women in, in position of decision making. The quality of the, any decision depends on who is in the room. Women are not in the room. All right. When you look at the COVID-19 task force, only two women, 
among the uh, 12. And we have, so, who takes care of the needs of women because they bear the brunt of everything. They, bear, they were the ones bearing the burden of looking for food. You know, a lot, when people were locked in, a woman still needs to cook for her family. Very few men helped in the kitchen, uh, very few. I have to say that there are even many, uh, men, uh, a number of men who are quite gender sensitive, with, you know, distinguishedly. But when we are focusing, we, we need to look back, look at women in leadership, and see what happens. And I will pay attention to the, you know, Kwana State Governor, you know, His Excellency, who appointed so many women into the cabinet. Uh, Lagos tried. We have a number of uh, National Assembly, you know, um, I mean, uh, members of state assemblies in this country. More than 15 of them, not even a single woman in the National Assembly. So who is discussing the issues of women? How can you describe, as a man, describe what happens in the labor room? You know, so the pain of women. If we are not having hospitals, for example, if, if, who, who takes the decision to build more hospitals? The women are not in the room. A woman in Nigeria who is pregnant today is on a maternity death road. Whether you're educated or not educated, because very few hospitals are available that pay attention and as you remember, you know, COVID-19 exposed the, the, the health care, family health care in Nigeria and the different levels of care that we have in Nigeria. And people, you know, we are locked down, people could not go out. It is easy for the politicians to take their children out for education, for example, and for health care. But who takes, what about the very poor and the vulnerable women who are in need of care? who are in need of education, the girls. We are having, you know, this is a conflict time. One issue to look at also is the education of the girl child. Okay. Many development partners, many non-governmental organizations, we have been trying to see what we can do on the girl child education. But here we are today, many girls are being kidnapped. This is going to erode a lot of things of, the, of what we did in the past. All right. So ours is to pay attention to what government is doing. Civil society organizations are doing a whole lot in mobilizing. The All right. The election is coming, 2023 is coming. So for this year's reflection, we need to look at what we can do to change the status of women representation in government. All right. And I hope that, yeah, I that hope that we'll be able to do you know, uh, uh, justice to that with women uniting with one another and producing the next leadership and changing that terrain, producing governors, producing speakers, producing n n n the parliamentarians at the National Assembly, All right. also at the State Assembly and local government. All right, uh, uh, let's uh, wrap it up uh, with this question before I come to my guest who is in the studio. I have uh, Mr. Damu Ahmed, who is a political psychologist in the studio right here with me. Uh, before I get to him, let's ask you this last question. How realistic is it what women are searching for? They're asking for equality with the men folk. Uh, looking at creation and uh, the current situation we are, how realistic is it that women are going to get equality with their men folks and is that realistic or is it just wishful thinking equality yes does not mean the same treatment but equality e equality means equality. equality means the same as a process okay right, right now you have women maybe accounting for about six point something percent and eleven percent at the national parliament or yes. representation in public life we have how many ministers? Only seven women are in the, in, the, in the room. And so, when you don't increase their number in decision making, okay. we can, there is a lacuna in the uh, Federal Character Commission that you can uh, bring in the focus, you can bring in women, All right. you know, as, as equity, in terms of equity. All right. A man, if you want to focus on this, if you don't build hospitals, for example, let me cite that. Okay. If you don't build hospitals, if many men, how many men use the hospitals, for example, at ordinary times? How many women use the hospitals? And so when you don't build hospitals, when you don't equip hospitals, how many people will suffer? Women, that is their goal. And so we need to look at long-term strategies, short-term strategies and long-term strategies in, able, in, in order to be able to provide that. The opportunity to go to school, now 
we have thousands of women, so we qualified in all fields. All right. Not appointing them. What is a deliberate, uh, uh, you know, who cares for the family? Okay. Put their voices, the quality of decisions, and that is shown in the, so many countries where we have women as president. Uh, they are managing their economy, they are managing, they cope with COVID-19 more than all the, the countries, many of the countries that men are, you know, in leadership. All right. And so it's the process of using equity to, e to equally give people the opportunity. Many girls are not in school. A lot of people are, be a lot of women are being raped, and the burden of ra of, uh, of uh, gender-based violence on the women. If you look at the Nigerian laws, for example, you are seeing, you know, um, how to report rape cases. If okay. You are in the local environment, you have to come all the way to the headquarters. That is what the law provides, and come with a victim and come. You know, so the burden of it is who cares about it? But you want to see that a, a, a life of a woman changes forever. It means everything that is on the table. You talked about challenges, challenges in employment, challenges in also going through the ranks. Uh, it is a lot. And so the burden is on, is, on, is on the woman. But how do we go, where do we go from here? The national agenda policy that the Nigerian is, Nigeria is operating, they are not obeying the law. The uh, president of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, promised before the, this last election okay. that he was going to give 40% representation for women. True. Has he done it? We are 50, and we ask for 50-50, because we need to be in order to improve the quality of decision making in a place that is conflict region that, uh, like Nigeria right now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you for joining us this morning. And we're hoping that uh, in the coming uh, days, uh, you'll be live in the studios with us so that we can trash out more issues concerning the women folks and uh, try to see how uh, our women can actually get equality and get the support they, are, uh, they desperately need to save Nigeria. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for celebrating women. Thank you to the guests in the studio. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, uh, the country director of Action Aid Nigeria, uh, the very infectious uh, NOB, always passionate about the women folks and this great country. Uh, we truly support her and all the women in Nigeria. All right. So let's get back into uh, the live studios with my guest, uh, Adamu Ahmed, who is a political uh, psychologist, just the perfect person we needed uh, this morning to help us look at this way. Uh, some say it's controversial issue some call it very exciting all right uh, Ahmed, uh, nice to have you in the studios my pleasure good morning Nigerians. all right uh, as a political psychologist uh, my question is how realistic is what the women want uh, initially they always say we don't know what the women want now they say they want equality is is it realistic for women uh, not just in Nigeria but globally to get uh, equality with the men folk and for the Nigerian women what do you think is the biggest challenge why are the men not letting the women have a say when obviously they've shown they can get the work done we saw Gozi Okunjuwela uh, we've seen Stella Odua we've seen uh, uh, Yemi Essan uh, these are some of the people who didn't do the women good with their uh, actions you know uh, but looking at the women folk what do you, do you think is realistic well, uh, to start with, let me say a uh, happy woman day, day yeah. to our mothers out there. Uh, first and foremost, uh, woman right is equivalent to uh, human right. Okay. As human beings, we, we have certain rights we must enjoy, right. irrespective of either a male or a female. Female, yeah whether Muslim or Christian, Christian yeah. that I believe is enshrined in the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria. True. Now come to the issue of the realization of women's dream to have equality, equality yeah. or fairness, let me use fairness, fairness okay. fair representation okay. in gov uh, government and other issues. I think the bottom line here is tradition and culture uh, seems to uh, drag down or pin them down, down okay. in respect to uh, equality. Uh, it is very, very possible for women to be in a limelight of affairs, just as we've seen that of uh, Ngozi, okay, Uwena, yeah. Ngozi Uwena, yeah. Yeah. we've seen uh, many women. Uh, Amina Mohammed in Muhammad, the United Nations. Yeah. United Nations Women Representative. Yeah. But the issue here is, 
we just have to revisit our cultures and tradition. Okay. I see uh, where or places where we ensure that we engage more women. Okay. Because if you look at the population today, worldwide and Nigeria um, specific, women numbers come to be an Above the, rate. More, the, twice that twice. of the men folk. If visit hospitals and see, uh, out of 10 or 20 uh, bad majority are women. If you talk of this insurgency, people that lose lost their lives mostly are men. But yeah. at the end of the day, women will remain at high increase rate. So to drop it all, uh, government must look at avenue where more women should be brought into governance. With that, they will be able to contribute their quota. I don't believe that men are more superior than women. Okay. The only thing is giving them the platform at which they will demonstrate their strength and by so doing they will contribute their quota to the development of the nation all right you make mention of two key factors uh the issue of religion and tradition being uh hurdles for women to cross for them to be able to get that equality with men uh looking at religion and tradition is it possible for us to do away with those two issues uh, for women to thrive uh for example, in terms of uh, tradition, of, there are certain uh, really, uh, traditions or areas or parts of the country where women are not allowed to do X, Y, Z. How do we go around that to get uh, those, uh, you know, the issue of tradition and religion out of the way? How can we stop well, that? Well, uh, one, the religious scholars, the clerics, yes. must be on the top game. The, well, there is need for them to educate both the male and the female counterpart okay. on the importance of women in society. Now, take for example, during elections, okay. there are, particularly from the north, there are people that up to date don't believe that their wives should be seen outside. Mm. Talk more or less of them to cast their votes. Vote. Okay. When it comes to issue of censors, some men don't even allow their wives to, to be, be counted. counted simply because they have a negative impression about the whole exercise. Uh, at religious level, I don't think there is anywhere in yeah. either the Muslim or Christian that deprives women from going out to contribute to the development of their country. The only thing I think is maybe the mode at which the women presented themselves. Okay. Or else. Uh, when you say the mode, uh, can we truly understand what you mean by the mode the women represent themselves? What do you mean by that? Well, Dressing Dressing is, is key. It's key. Very yeah. key as very far key. as religion is concerned. concerned. True. Uh -huh. But I believe if the two major religions will revisit and speak up on yeah. let's have a mode, and uh, once the women are able to adjust their outings, their dresses, okay. it will go a long way at in the places where they will have more opportunities. Uh, as for the culture, you know, we in Africa, we value more, we value culture and yes. religion more than even justice. True. And is that not a bad, uh, a bad thing for us to value religion and culture more than justice? Oh, and that is why we are where we are today. Uh -huh. Because you cannot compare us with the Americans, for example. Okay. These are people that most of us believe are philosophers. They neither belongs to Islam nor Christianity, Christianity yeah. but yet they are doing great simply because they value justice mm -hmm. and that brought to a limeline of injustice everywhere they said is a threat to justice anywhere, anywhere. and we just have to make sure that in dealing with justice we put all parameters at where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Women, according to United Nations Secretary General's uh, recent reports that came out barely 24 hours ago, says women uh, are heads of state and government in 22 countries, but only 24.9% uh, of uh, of the uh, national parliamentary 
parliamentarians are women and at that current rate progress uh, gender and equality among uh, heads of government will take another 130 years uh, how bad is it uh, like for instance looking at national assembly we have more men triple if not quadruple the number of women in national assembly how do you think that's going to truly uh, affect uh, decision making by women and giving women the opportunity to make policies that is going to open up the polity for more women to come in uh, how bad is this uh, uh, to be honest with you uh, women themselves have issues among themselves now for example in the north here once a woman come out to aspire for any political position, they gave her series of names. Why? Is, is it because they are jealous that uh, she has the effrontery to come out to be voted for? Or uh, why, uh, why does that play out? Religion and culture. S as simple as that. Religion and culture. Uh, most of and it, it, can we also say the absence of education uh, because uh, the, the, the people are not enlightened or well educated so probably they don't really appreciate the uh, aspect. Yeah, education also play a key role no. to that actually. Okay. But if you look at it, even in the southeast where women education is at high, high rate, okay. but yet you don't have them more at the National the Assembly, Assembly simply okay. because of what I said just now, culture and religion. Angel. Once a woman comes out to vote for any political seat, people start coding her names. Okay. She's this, she's that, she's this, she's that. And at the process of voting, even her colleagues, women, will dump her and pick the male as parent. Okay, so like we saw Sarah Jubil. Exactly. Had only one vote. Only one vote. And that and was her vote. That is her vote, exactly. So no other so woman. No any other woman voted for her. And which, if really what they are aspiring to have, if really they mean it and they want to have it, I think they must start from themselves. Uh, I am not saying the men are not at fault by not implementing policies and programs okay. and bringing them up, but they themselves have issues that they need to address among themselves. All right. Uh, a, there was a, a recent uh, report that was uh, a survey that was done by NOR Post talking about social economic challenges uh, women face in 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 the country. Uh, let's look at the issue of social economic challenges. Uh, would you say uh, it's also a big stumbling block for women in terms of economic power? Uh, do you think that young women have the economic power or the economic support to be able to play politics and also vie for uh, credible and lead positions across board? Well, the socio-economic aspect of the country in general, uh, looking at the COVID-19 and even the past as antecedents, yes. uh, women generally, uh, I must say, have the financial uh, disability. They are financially at disadvantage. Okay. They don't have much to uh, engage themselves in entrepreneurship activities. And okay. politics, as we all know, is something that involves finance. Uh, even the male, among the male, not all of them are able to start it up from buying a form, okay. going to primaries, going for campaigns, and other things. Politics entirely demands or calls for financial uh, involvement and this is why uh, even the women at times looking at how expensive See, it is. politics is they decided to stay or remain at the bench just to watch so if government and their fellow women who are in government who are calling for equity and fair uh, representativeness those already in government if they can team up and bring more women into politics, into governance, employment, and many things. By so doing, they will have enough. By okay. so doing, they will have enough to cater for themselves, themselves and, and their children, children for future development and others. All right. Uh, in case you're just joining us, you're watching Dialogue on Liberty Television. We'll be going for a quick break. When we come back from the break, we'll still be looking at this, some of the socioeconomic challenges facing Nigerian women. Stay with us.
da dunkule da garin Mr. Chef Sizne. Ko wace miya abar marmari ce. Mr. Chef mai sanya marmarin gaske. All right, welcome back from the break. You're watching Africa's most uh, beautiful breakfast show. Definitely, it's Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name remains Anthony Momodu, and uh, my guest in the studio, Adamu uh, Ahmed, uh, who is a political psychologist, has been helping us look at uh, uh, the challenges faced by women. And we, we're talking about the social economic uh, challenges. All right, uh, we had 42% uh, of Nigerians, according to the recent uh, NOI polls survey con uh, conducted in Nigeria says that 42 percent of Nigerians uh, believe that uh, financial empowerment is one of the hurdles facing women which you've uh, talked about uh, we also have 35 percent talking about uh, uh, poverty as one of the issues then access to quality education 33 percent of Nigerians uh, believe that's another challenge by the women then gender inequality 19 percent domestic violence 19 percent and uh, we also got sexual abuse 19 uh, percent and cultural discrimination then gender discrimination in employment uh, looking at all these factors that have been rated, uh, which of them seem to be more uh, challenging for the women or which of them do you think is, should be something the women should be able to get across with because even the men face some form of discrimination somewhere along the line? Uh, personally, I will start with that of education. Education, yes. Because... Uh, okay, talking about access to education, 33% of the Nigerians believe women lack education. access. Yes. yes. Not only women. Oh. But even the men, men are vulnerable to this. Education, as popular as known, or uh, for years we believe that is the key to True. success. True. This insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, name it all, is to me lack of quality education, because there mm. is different from education and quality education. education okay by the time your education is not reflecting in who you are you only have the education but not qualitative and now uh, the education system the women are having today uh, for uh, for them to come up more in government in politics in administration and other things government should look inward by making it if possible compulsory free and compulsory girl child education from primary right to university now not just free but compulsory compulsory and now once the national assembly team up with the executive that is the legislative arm mm, yeah. team up with the executive this can easily come by and by so doing i'm telling you the nation will grow high because the women are the hallmark of affairs from the family level and once the family got it wrong you should have it in mind that the community will have it wrong the community the school also will have it wrong and the education will not be reflective so the education sector should be revisited something should be done to the education sector whereby women will be given free and compulsory education, education. right from primary University. University. Okay, well said. In terms of domestic violence, uh, the report tells us that, that we've got 19% uh, of Nigerians who have uh, pinpointed uh, domestic violence and some of the challenges women go through. Uh, looking at domestic violence, what will be your take on it? And also uh, looking at physical abuse and uh, religious discrimination. Well, I think uh, this issue of kidnapping will have exposed the rate at which women have been vulnerable to the mm. issue of uh, uh, domestic, call, domestic violence. violence. Yes. Today, women are forced for to marriage, forced abortion, uh, forced uh, many many things come up when it comes to this. Yeah. And with the issue of 
uh, this weapon of rape. Rape, rape is another eleven percent of Nigerians also pointed rape. Rape, yeah. rape. Yeah, and I think just like some state uh, enacted law laws okay. for death penalty. death penalty for rapists, and I think that is a welcome development okay. because I don't think there is any sensible man who will sit and watch his daughter being abused. Yes. Uh, even if you are the one, I don't think you will take you it lightly. It. And to some extent, I think government are responding to that. Uh, the only thing is we need more awareness, more education need to be passed across for people to know the danger involved in uh, domestic violence. violence. Okay, let's talk about uh, discrimination at, at workplaces. Uh, women suffer uh, how can that be uh, you know checked and if possible rooted out completely in terms of discrimination of women in workplaces and uh, would you say those this, those uh, challenges are real or you think uh, actually the women not all women it's not all jobs women can do do you believe in that do you believe in this discrimination against women as regards their capability uh, well our strengths are not equal this, I, you're talking about physical strength or mental strength? No, because some women strength. are very no, intelligent. I'm talking about physical strength. Okay. I'm talking about physical strength. But we have some women who do martial arts who can beat some men up with uh, so much but ease. But how many are they? Okay. That is what okay, you, the percentage now. The percentage now. How many are they? So now, there are some uh, activities or employment that, of course, we will have to look at the risk involved in it. Take, for example, uh, pilot. Of course, it's very good to have women into Hi. this scheme, but anything that will uh, kind of expose women to hardship and other activities, I think it will be better if that activities will be sub uh, will be substituted okay. with a better one. But like, but, 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 but what if the women? The women say they they want to. They like that challenge. They no. want to be pilots. They want to. Of course, they we want have, to face hardship too. Of course, too. we have women even in military. Okay. We have women in the air force. We have women in land army, police, and others, and they are excelling. That I'm not disputing. Okay. And of course, uh, but the issue here is this: how many are they? You can't compare their numbers with that of the male. Okay. And to bridge that gap, I think. Education also will play a vital role. role. And not only education, need of sensitizing each other. And that is why uh, my earlier statement, I made mention, those in power, the women that are in government, okay. should see the possibility of coming up with programs to empower more women. Check out. Most of the empowerment programs that are ongoing by politicians, maybe uh, just politicians, you will see most of the empowerment program centered on women, women, women. Okay. Why? Because they are at realm of affairs at home. They need something to keep the family stable. And without that 10, 15 naira coming in, she will find it difficult. And not all men likes giving out no. all, all the time. Maggie, sugar, this. No, it's <laughs> touching. So the women need an entrepreneurial skill, skill okay. to keep them fit. And for the employment, of course, there should be a quota allocated to the women. And government should stick to that to ensure that any quota approved, they should deal with it diligently. Looking at the, this present government, uh, would you say it has, uh, the government has been fair to women? Uh, we had the president promise a lot of things for women when he was about to be sworn in. But afterwards, we've not seen that uh, apply. Would you say this government has been truly fair to the women? Uh, have, has he lived up to the billing of saying he was going to give lots of women a chance, like we've seen in Kogi State, where all the deputy uh, local government chair are women? And uh, in Kwara, we, we've seen the same thing. Uh, we saw in the XY government of uh, uh, good luck, Jonathan. We have lots of women in government. Uh, why do you think the case is different here? Because even the president did tell us that his wife is in the other room. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, looking at that, so how would you judge this administration? Do you think it was deliberate? You see, uh, we must be honest to ourselves. Whenever we are talking of government, we always give emphasis at federal government. Okay. Now, let's go back to state governments and right. see. Out of the 36 states we have, how many governors we are able to implement this? 
You just cited an example with three or four governors. Yeah, Kogi State, one of them. Kogi, one of them. And uh, even that of... But why do, you, why do you think they're reluctant? Good. You know, whatever happens at the state, yes. have it in mind that it will be the duplicate that will happen at the nation level. Because if not, uh, His Excellency Mohamed Bouhagi that came up and drafted the names of ministers, formally, it used to be state governors that approve or send, send names, names yeah, true. to represent them at the National Council. Now, it is not the duty of the president to tell you, no, change this name and bring this name. No, it is what you submitted to the presidency that he'll make use of. True. And what is happening at the state level is just direct replica of but, what we have. But if we, if he had that, if he had it in mind to say, okay, in this my administration, we're going to give the women folks a chance to help make Nigeria better. He can as well. We know he has the way of lobbying uh, because most of the gov state governments are his party members. So and he has an influence on them. Probably he is not so key into women having a chance. Well, uh, if you look at most of, or let me start from the Minister of Finance. Finance, Finance Minister okay. of Finance, she's a woman. Yeah. And that is a technical area where we need an honest person to deal with. Okay. Even if we have all women as ministers, but the finance and key sector are monitored by men, things may not work. But that is an area where we need a diligent, a focused, and dedicated person. And I think if we will do justice to her in person, All right. she has done a lot in sanitizing the financial sector of the country, complement of her and others in the ministry. So the presidency might have not done well okay. in um, maintaining his words okay. prior to 2019 election where he made, made promises of yeah. bringing women into his cabinet. But notwithstanding, he has done the little he can. It is now left for state government and local government to complement or do far better than what he has done. He cannot accommodate all into the Federal Executive Council. Now, if state will have maybe five, uh, seven, ten women as commissioners, commissioners okay. seven, ten as council chairmen, 15, 20 as councillors. I think by so doing, other women will now start looking at it that, yes, we are also equal to the tax. And mark this, there are uh, activities at local level. Their determination at local level will speak for them at uh, national and uh, international level. Okay. Compliment of Mrs. Ongozi. Yeah. She served as a minister of finance. We all witnessed what she has done. And I believe that is what got her the present position sure. she's occupying as the first woman in the world, first Africa, to head the uh, World Trade world organization. International, uh, organization. Yes. So these and many other things, I think we will have to look into it and deal with it diligently. All right. Uh, before we go into uh, the rights of women that seem to have been suppressed, let's uh, quickly look at this. 39% of Nigerians, uh, based on the NOI polls survey that was carried out recently, say the lack of uh, access to quality health care facility and service is on that big point that has continually pushed the women to the background. Uh, for you, how important would you say the health sector should be uh, putting in good shape uh, for the sake of our women folks? Uh, to be honest with you, we have a lot to do when it comes to the healthcare sector of this country. Whoever will speak and will speak honestly mm, yeah. and sincerity, we just have to do a lot in the health sector. COVID-19, even aside from COVID-19, yeah. many things have shown our incapacitated effort or our inability to address minor, minor sicknesses. You will be surprised that you go to some hospitals, operation will not be done. Operations are done with using torchlight in this country. There are especially the primary health care centers at the local government especially areas. Especially primary health care centers at local government areas and even at remote areas. They don't have light. Okay. Talk more or less of 
making or befitting the hospital to at least to some standard. So uh, even the issue of uh, facilities in the hospitals, yeah. you go to some hospitals, if it is raining, some, I uh, know, a lot needs to be done when it comes to uh, healthcare delivery. Just as the first speaker. Yes, uh, that's a Mrs. Uh, NLOB. Just yeah. as she pointed out, majority of the primary health care uh, centers. Are being, centers are being used or utilized by women because they mostly have issues health, from challenges. health challenges yeah. issues, pregnancy, before birth, after birth, during birth, many and most of this uh, delivery this thing comes with complications. Conditions. Sure. So before you rushed some, uh, before you rushed a pregnant woman from a local government to the state headquarters, some of them gives up on the way, and that is why the healthcare delivery system, government should look into it, both at local government level, state level, and at the national level. Well, let's look at the different. Uh, let's look at uh, you mentioned. Okay, before we look at the rights of women that have been trampled upon, let's look at the geopolitical zones across the country. The northwest people uh, uh, from the Soviet Don, northwest uh, women uh, say 51% uh, say they need vocational trainings, and also the southeast we have as much as 62% of them uh, uh, saying suggested access to quality healthcare services as one of the pro uh, problems they are facing from that region and looking at the the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria which of the regions do you think suffer more in terms of um, women now suffer more in terms of not getting the chance to you know live up their you know their potentials well let me start with the northeast East, okay the northeast uh, I must give credits and uh, this thing compliment to his Excellency Governor Babagana, Babagana Zulum. Zulum. Yeah. I am not speaking for myself, but I'm, I believe I'm speaking uh, the minds of many Nigerians. Okay. That man has both has proved himself distinctively different. Someone who could be a president. He has proved himself distinctively different from other politicians. politicians. True. True. This is a man that works day and night without looking at the consequences or without even seeking for favor or flair from others. But others, okay. He did his work as enshrined in the Constitution. Sure, yeah. Now, the issue of the Northeast, coupled with this insurgency, see, yeah. most of them are off system of livelihood. They are off the system. And not only entrepreneurial uh, skill that can put them back, back to their track. Okay. They also need reorientation and psychological testing. And I believe those in the IDP camp, uh, many programs are ongoing to see how they will evaluate their sufferings. Because most of them have lost their economy uh, support, source of, so, so, source of so income. income. Okay. And there is need for government to help them to that direction. Uh, generally, women are left behind, if we must speak the truth. Well, we're looking at the whole zones now, you want to say the north, uh, uh, n women in the northeast, north central, northwest, seem to, uh, are they the more marginalized than those in the southeast and the south south? Uh, marginalized in terms of so, what? Yes, their rights not being, you know, not getting all this issues we've mentioned, these socio-economic issues we've mentioned, uh, the uh, marginalization, would you say it's more prevalent in the north or in the southeast or the south-south? How would you rate it okay, according well, to the six zones? According what to the six yeah, zones. Yeah, what would be your rating I from think, one uh, to six? You know, most of the times the outcome of research is yes. uh, some of them are subject to some errors. Okay. But notwithstanding, we'll look at it uh, from the dimension of population, sure. okay. the not cent uh, the not west have the largest population okay. uh, in the country, okay. complement of Kano State, and with that you should expect that they will have more women that are in need okay. than other well, geopolitical zones, zones. Okay. Uh, because uh, the more populated a country, uh, a geopolitical zone, zone is, is, the more problems 
such area we encounter okay. and the more intellectuals those areas will also encounter okay. today the, i doubt much if there is no any product of china that are not being used in the whole country, country. Okay. complement of their population all right all right uh, let's begin to wrap it up can you uh, highlight some of the rights in your own estimation the uh, rights of women that have been trampled upon that needs to be lifted as we wrap up well uh generally i think we'll look at uh, just as we rightly pointed out the area of education, education okay yes. the right to education right the girl education, child education yeah. right a girl child education, education yeah uh, the girl child education should be looked into with utmost sincerity. Right. Government at all level should do something in making sure that the education is not just compulsory but uh, free and compulsory. Not mm -hmm. only that, we should desist or we should stay uh, off from lip services, just as she also rightly pointed out. Anytime lip we, service from the government? From the government. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, putting something written okay. should follow with supervision and making sure that that thing is well done. Done, okay. Uh -huh. And on the issue of uh, sexual abuses, uh -huh. harassment, yes. and other forms domestic of violence, domestic violence, rape, rape, and other things, uh, our parents need to stand up and speak for our children because. Okay. The numbers of rape cases recorded during in that the lockdown issues, and yeah, that is not Frightening. the exactly numbers. Oh, so it's because higher. Some parents who not find it or they will find it somehow for them to report a rape case to the appropriate quarters okay. simply because the uh, neighborhood will tag the house. And uh, the name stigma. stigmatization will now come in. Okay. But I believe that is not the exactly numbers. Okay. There are more than what we recorded. So government, the religious institution, all stakeholders must stand and speak for women. Okay. They are our models. Okay. Finally, in terms of psychologically speaking, uh, how traumatized do you think the women are? And how much support do they need? In, in one minute, if you can wrap it up. Well, uh, they need our support, especially the married ones need their husband's support because uh, they cannot achieve much if they don't have the support of their husband. Okay. The Nkwezi, uh, the Ungu, um, Dr. Ongozi that we are celebrating today, yes, she has the full support, support and backup of her husband and that is why she is where she is today. And for those that are not married, they need the support of their Friends. fathers okay. so that they can meet up with the challenges. All right, I want to say thank you to uh, one of Nigeria's uh, finest uh, uh, psychologists uh, in terms of politi speaking politically now in the person of uh, Adamu Ahmed. Thank you very much uh, for joining me in the studios this morning. Thank you very and, much. And uh, helping us uh, look at uh, the interesting issue as regards to women, uh, women's rights, leadership, struggles, and the future. Thank you very much uh, for thank your you support. Very All much. right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap on Nigeria's finest breakfast show dialogue and Liberty Television. Uh, we've been talking with uh, a political uh, psychologist in the person of Adamu Ahmed, uh, better known as A.B. Ahmed, uh, by his uh, fans and well wishers. Uh, we've been looking at uh, women's, uh, li uh, you know, struggles, challenges, and the future. Can they achieve their aim? It was the big question, but uh, Adamu Ahmed has been able to take us through. And uh, we also did speak with the country director of Action Aid Nigeria, the person of Enna Obi, who kick-started the program. I want to say thank you to her. And uh, that's how we call it a wrap on the program. Wishing you the very best and stay Still saying great thank you to Nigerian women for doing great things for us. We truly love you. Remain blessed. My name is Anthony Momodo. Good morning, Nigeria.